Hey, how's it going everyone? In today's project, we're going to create a empty page, white empty page. I'm just kidding. We're going to create a ripple effect. Check this out. Bum, 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 bum. Doesn't matter where, where I click, it's going to create this little ripple effect. Now you can also change the color later on if you wish. So I'm using here a linear gradient, but this is going to be created using React. So I would suggest that we just start creating this by, first of all, creating our React application. And for this, as always, I am going to create a repository. Now this repository on GitHub will be also from where you can download the uh, code, which will be down in the video description because it's going to be on my blog post. Now the link to the blog post will be down in the video description and you can download then. The, there's also a complete post for those of you who want to read more about the project. And there will also be the link to the repository. You can, you can just re visit my repository, Norbert PM that is. Okay, so let's create here a rip. Uh, you don't have to do this. If you want to create your own repository, then please feel free to do so. I'm just going to create my own one. So ripple effect and react. Or should I name it react? Yeah, let's call it react dash ripple dash effect and dash YouTube. Okay, uh, should we have a description? No, it's going to remain public. And there we go. Okay, now we can import this, I'm going to clone it, I'm going to bring it in. Uh, let's see, let's go here, let's go to command palette, get clone, go into my repository. And this should be the very first thing that appears. There we go. And I'm going to go into my desktop, web development, uh, YouTube projects, and react projects. Okay, so let's clone it in here. And I'm going to now just create from the console and create a mpx create dash react dash app and dot because I'm going to create it right within this folder. And you know what? I'm also going to remove my face. You don't need it anymore. You can just watch the code. So let me take out my face. Take out my face. And it should be gone. Boom. Okay. <laughs> so now back to the project. And now until this is loading, just a short notice about the project. This is not a large project, but it's extremely effective because we are going to use a couple of coordinates, meaning that we are going to watch the click event happening on the client, okay, on the client X and Y axis. And I love doing this because it's kind of like game development. The game development also watches where the user is always clicking. So uh, until this installs and also will open up, okay, no, no modules are in. We're also going to create a little CSS file then later on where the CSS will live. I'm not going to use my default CSS file because there's no need for it. Just for you. for those of you who don't know, I have a, a, a CSS repository where I built a little framework. You can use it. It's on GitHub and it's basically the CSS that I'm using for all my projects. Okay, this is all almost done. Now, as always, I'm going to delete here a couple of files. Oh, I could just leave them in there. Uh, the logo, SVG, and setup and reports. You know what? I'm going to delete them right now. So, this logo, app test, uh, index CSS, we don't need. So, let's just only. And my coffee machine just stopped. Sorry about that. So, only keep what we do need. This everything that we need. And I'm also going to do a, you know what, let me make this first of all work. App, we don't need you. I'm going to delete here everything. I'm going to create my own CSS. And in the app, I'm also going to remove everything that's in here. And just create a, let's create an empty fragment with an H1. Forgot to change my typing, so React. And let's create here a H1 with project. Okay, logo SVG, let's remove this. Remove everything that you don't need. Believe me, it's much better that way. Remove this, remove the index, remove the report. And we should now npm and start with React Ripple Effect. Yeah, we are in our folder. So npm start, and we should see our project starting on the yes, because I have the other one open. I'm going to open it on a different port. So for you, it should start on localhost 3000. For me, it's going to start on localhost 3001 because I have the other one open. Now I'm not going to zoom in here, do something like that. 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to do this initial commit now. I'm going to open up a new console and let's do a git add dot. I'm going to add everything git commit and uh, initial commit. So we're going to see this commit, you know, that was the initial one and git push and this should push now everything up here. And we should have, let me take a look at our project uh, code. Come on, let's do a refresh. We should see everything popping up in here on the master branch. So view code, okay, there we go. So we have our commit. We can close out the index. Again, you don't have to do this. This is from where your project actually starts. We're going to go into our app and we're going to start by creating here, well, not much, but first things first, I'm going to bring in our use state. So import, I'm going to use the use state hook. So import use state. And for our state, let's go before the return. Remember, cannot use state in the return. Let's create a const. We're going to call this ripple. Ripple and then the setter function, which is set ripple. Okay, we're going to assign this to state, use state, and the state will be just an empty array for now. So what we want to have in our, let me go back here. What we want to have in our project is just a empty container almost, but we are going to name it. So I'm going to take this out. Let's name it, uh, let's create a div with a class of ripple dash container. And within here, we're going to create a div with a class of dot ripple. ripple. And this is where the ripple will live. Now, this will actually return just a span, which is going to track the coordinates. So our ripple, actually, this should be a plural, should be repulse. Okay, so the repulse will be returned here. Repulse, obviously not going to see anything. And as I said, we want to click here. Let's also change it later on to a pointy finger. We want to click here and create a ripple effect. Now, let's also create the CSS. Let's, let's style everything a bit. So we have a class of ripple container and a class of ripple. So I'm going to take the class of ripple container, go into my CSS. Let's tag it, uh, ripple container. And we're just going to enlarge this because the container is momentarily has well, zero value. So let's assign it a height of 100 viewport heights, meaning it's going to be, it's going to take up the entire height of the, its container. Now also going to position this relative because within here, we're going to position then our ripple effect. I'm also going to use a cursor pointer. And now if we click over it, you can see this clicky finger. Okay, now, now let's go for the ripple. So ripple, ripple class, and we're going to position this now absolute. Now also, I want to have an overflow of hidden. And let's also make it so it's going to take up the entire width and height of the container. So we're going to assign this a 100% height and a width of 100%. Also, we're going to assign it to the top, zero. And so this is basically where it's going to stop. Start from top zero and left zero. So left, because on the left side and top, because at the top. Okay, so there's where the, this is where our connected. Now, for example, if I would do now a background and red, then you should see the entire thing changing to red. Okay, now you can see a bit of margin. <laughs> Forgot to do this. Uh, let's do here general recess of star and margin. Oops, not that margin zero and padding zero, which is going to take off everything. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to take out this red color. That's not what we want. We want within the ripple, I'm going to create the span. Now the span will actually be the ripple itself. So I'm going to select the class of, oh, we can just go up here. Uh, wait, I know this will not work. I'm not going to do nesting for now. So let's do a ripple. I'm going to show you this later on. So ripple at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how nesting works in CSS now. So ripple and span, and I'm going to position this also absolute. So position, absolute, and then border radius. You saw this ripples, they were, they were actually round. Now, if you don't want them to be round, then don't add a border radius of 
50%. But if you do want to have them round, then please do that. Also going to use a transform scale. Let's get to scale it to zero. It's going to be small, actually <laughs> non-existing almost. And then let's add a background color. So just the background of RGBA of, let's say 231, uh, 70. It's going to be a red color. 60, so this is not what you saw in our presentation. It's going to be a different one. We can add that one later on. And the opacity of 0.5. Whoops, not on the Mac. Don't use Control, uh, Alt, S. Okay, now I also want to add to this a animation because it has to scale. Now, I'm going to use the Add Key Framework. Add Key Frames, not Framework. <laughs> and let's add here a Ripple, Ripple and Dash Animation. Okay. Now, this is just going to go to, because we know from what is coming, from is going to come from a scale of zero. I'm going to do here a transform scale, and we're going to transform it to two, and also going to set then at the end of this animation, a opacity of zero, making it then invisible when the animation uh, finishes. So let's also add this animation now. I'm going to use here animation as a property on the ripple span. Remember, not only adding it on the ripple, but on the span tag. Okay, we're going to use the animation ripple. I would love if in our animation property, the ripple anima the animation name will automatically automatically be recognized, but it doesn't. I don't know why. Okay, now let's add a 0.5 seconds for the duration of the animation and a linear for the curvature. So if you click here, nothing happens, obviously. So let's go to our app CSS. And let's say that we're going to add a const of handle ripple effect. We're going to assign this an error function. Also, we're going to take into consideration the event because we can now target then whatever we're uh, clicking on. Okay, and this function will be now added to the entire container. Okay, so let's go in here on click. And whoops, what was that? On click and when the click will be initiated, then the handle ripple function will be also launch. I'm going to close up the left part, control B, get to close up the Explorer. Now let's just console log here a console log. And you know what, I don't want to go into the console, let's do a windows dot alert. And the message of ripple with two P's. Okay, so if I click here, this will appear. Perfect. So meaning this is working. Now clicking on the container, remember, now in order for us to know where we're clicking, it just clicked and it doesn't matter where I'm clicking, it's going to just initiate. Uh, let's go to localhost and we're going to go to localhost 3000 because this should be still open. Then you can see exactly where I'm clicking, the animation will take place. Okay, now we need to add this to the handle, so we need to watch for where we were clicking. All right, so let's go into a handle ripple effect function here. And first things first, we're going to create a variable that is going to watch the ripple container. So we're going to create here a const, we're going to call it ripple and container. And we're going to now assign it, well, to the event itself, and we're going to track our boundaries then. So I'm going to use E, because this is the event, dot current, and target. And then we'll use the get boundary, or get the bounding client and rack. Okay. So after we have this assigned to our variable, we're going to create another one which we're going to, well, we need to actually look for the size of it. So let's create here const, call it size. And we're going to use here a map function and then a max from whatever, so dot max from whatever the ripple container dot width is. And there should be dot. I'm still hitting the comma, sorry about that. And now comma, and we also need the height, so ripple container dot height. Okay. We got our size now. Now we need to to look for both axes. So the X and the Y axis. Now first we're going to create a const for the X axis. We're going to call it X. Then we're going to go to e.client. 
x and we're going to subtract from this the ripple container dot left minus the size divided by two basically the half of it and i'm going to actually copy this and paste because we're going to do the same thing for the y-axis so we're going to change this to y this to a capital y and this should be the top so dot top okay now that we have both of these we're going to create a object we're going to call this const new ripple and we're going to assign it to an object and this object will have a x comma a y comma a size and a id which will be well the time because we can have the same but you could also use uuid if you want but i'm going to use here simple uh, i'm going to assign this to a date dot now function is just going to assign an id of the date of the date time now remaining within our functionality we're going to set now so set ripple and remember we already had an id but i'm going to update and not an id we already had an array but i'm going to update that array with the ripples that already exist and we're going to add to those ripples a new ripple now at the start we don't have any ripple but as soon as we create a ripple still having this in here then i'm going to add it to that array so where should those ripples be displayed now they're displayed here but now we're actually displaying a array of ripples and we can't see them so we're going to use the dot map function on them in order to get our ripples and we're going to return from those ripples a ripple which will then be displayed in a span tag remember the span tag that i created so let's go ahead create a span close up that span and within the span first things first we're going to give this the key of the ripple id dot id you could also use the index if you want and now for the style we're going to use so let's also add to the style property we are going to use the top as the ripple so where should this ripple appear well it should appear from the top with the ripple dot y remember this is on the y-axis then from the left so comma left remember these are css properties so from the left we're going to come with the variable of ripple dot x then the width of the ripple will be the ripple dot size and of course also the height of the ripple will be the ripple dot size again okay now this should already work let's try it out let's click and there we go we have a little ripple okay this is the old version so pretty simple project hope you enjoyed it if you did give this video a thumbs up if you didn't thumbs down if you have any kind of questions or suggestions please leave them in the video description down below in the comment section i will respond to each and every comment also if you want to see more projects like this then subscribe to the channel also if you want to see more projects like this then subscribe to the channel and also click that notification bell in order to get notified whenever i post a new video with this being said, I'm Norbert DBM and wishing you a lovely day. Bye-bye. Take care.